It's great to see you guys back. <laughs> Today we're going to cover food part two, quality and micronutrients. The first bit we look at is quality. In terms of quality, what I mean by is the quality of the source of the product. So in terms of carbs, fats and proteins. I'll tell you a bit about myself. When I first started out, I wasn't great at this. I used to have bacon in the morning, sausages, bagels, loads of wraps, protein bars, you name it, I tried it out. So I didn't really have great or even good sources of carbs, fats and proteins. So I kind of put this together in terms of good, better and best. So good used to be like good, as in good enough, but not that great. And then they got things like better and the best top quality products. So I've gone through those stages myself and it's taken me many years to get to a point where I finally feel confident what good products are, what better products are, and what the best products are. And I've kind of put this together to make it easier for you so you don't make the same mistakes I made. So it doesn't take you five, six years, it takes you three, six months. And just by changing a couple of things from good to better to best, you'll see notable changes in yourself and your body shape, composition, performance, everything. So let's get straight into detail. So let's start this off with carbs. And the first category to look at is good. So a couple of good sources of carbohydrates. We've got breads, pita bread. Also got things like spaghetti. Followed by pasta. Got rice cakes in there as well. And then lastly, wraps. And then now moving on to the better category. We've got things like fruit and pasta. So fruit, I mean any fruit. And then you got white rice. And you got things like couscous, lentils. And quinoa and like beans. I want to bring my beans, there's a lot of beans out there, so I'll give you some examples of them. There's some better ones, we've got like black beans, kidney beans. You've got like mung beans, soybeans. You've also got pinto as well. And lastly you've got lima beans. And you've also got things like peas, so chickpeas or black eyed peas. Alright, now moving on to the best category. So these are the best sources of carbohydrates you can get. Let's start off with sweet potato. Then you got potato. So pretty much your regular white potato. You also got oats and that like butternut squash. Then you got vegetables, and that's a whole host of vegetables. That's like spinach, kale, carrots, broccoli. I won't list them all now, but you will get this sent to you via email. Now you've looked at carbohydrates, let's take a look at protein. So let's first look at the good category. In the good category, we've got beans. So this is the same beans we had for the carbohydrates. That'll make more sense in week three, we look at portion size and balance in terms of sources of 
protein and carbohydrates and how to balance them on a plate. We're going to put beans back on this list. And that's the same beans again, so kidney beans, black beans. Got mung beans, soya beans. And you've got pinto and lima beans. And then you've got things like lentil and tofu. And temper as well. And these two are soy based products. And you've got two types of spaghetti one is edmanda, and the other one is black bean. And then you've also got corn, which is a vegetarian version of meat. Then moving on to the next category, which is better. You've got some meats in here, so you've got things like pork, lamb, beef, and goat. Then you've also got Greek yogurt in here, depending on which Greek yogurt though. And then you've also got Best. And the best ones are poultry, which is basically chicken and turkey. And also duck and goose. And also in the best category you've got fish and eggs. And in week three we'll cover this in more detail in terms of why they fit into good, better and best. But generally speaking it's because these sorts of protein that contains what protein is a better version and the best contain the most effectively. But again, week three, we'll cover that in more portion size and balance. Now we cover protein, let's now look at some healthy fats. So, in terms of healthy fats, In the good category, you've got oily fish. Which is, is that salmon. You've got trout. Herring and mackerel. and also sardines. And in that category you've also got peanuts, but in salted ones. And then moving on to the better category. You've got your nuts. Just for example of nuts, you get cashews and almonds. You also got things like walnuts and pecans. It's got Brazil nuts and pine nuts. That's just to name a few. Again, you get an email with a longer version of the full list. And then you've also got things like avocado. 
think that thing's like seeds, was it chia seeds? Some pumpkin seeds. Then you got things like sesame seed and flax seeds. And then moving on to the best category. You've got your oils. So the coconut oil, olive oil. Rapeseed oil and rice bran oil. And the reason why they split all of this is because oily fish does contain a significant amount of protein, so it's on the good side. Then you've got things like betta, nuts, again, contain some carbohydrates in there and some protein, so it stays in the better category, along with seeds. Avocado's got some omega-6s in there, which we tend to have a lot of in our body, instead of omega-3s. And then you've got, the best is oils, because they're 100% healthy fats. There's just fat in them. So next we're going to take a look at micronutrients, which basically is vitamins and minerals. In terms of what we're going to look at, we're going to look at four of the top ones that most people have heard about, know about, but don't quite know what to do with them, which are vitamin B12, vitamin D3, and then you've got magnesium and zinc. In terms of what we're going to look at, we're going to look at what their benefits are, and then we're going to look at also why you could be lacking in those and, and the symptoms behind that. So if you're lacking in them, you feel like X, Y, Z. And with all that information there, the only real way you're going to know if you're lacking any micronutrients, the vitamins and minerals, is actually by having a blood test with your doctor. Best thing to do is look at the list of symptoms you think. Actually, I am feeling a bit like this. Maybe I should see the doctor. Explain to him why you feel like that, and he'll do a blood test if needed. Let's crack on with the information. First thing I'll look at is vitamin D3. I'll start with the benefits. So the first one is, it helps with absorption of calcium and phosphate. Which is great for bones. And next one, helps to improve bone strength. Improves resistance against diseases. Helps with energy levels. And you got a couple other ones which again will be sent to you via email and a PDF sheet so you can print the rest of those out. But some of the couple of things to look out for if you're lacking any of those. So if you're lacking in vitamin D3, you might notice you feel tired. And actually that's one of the reasons why I went to the doctor, because I was feeling tired. He suggested I take some vitamin D3 and that's really helped with my energy levels. And you got any aches and pains, mainly muscular. And you got chronic pain and low mood. If you feel like you're suffering for any of those, I'd recommend going to see the doctor explaining why and then he'll put you through for a blood test and just take you from there. That's 
vitamin D3 and the benefits. And most people lack vitamin D just because there's not a lot of sunlight during the day if you live in the UK. If you live in a nice hot country, with have got great weather, lots of sun, you're probably not going to be as low in vitamin D. But generally speaking, most people are low in vitamin D3. Alright, next one we're going to look at is vitamin B12. So, vitamin B12. So some of the benefits of vitamin B12. First one you've got, helps maintain energy levels. Helps to boost mood. Helps the nervous system function properly. And then you've got it aids digestion as well. And then if you're lacking any of that, you might feel some of these symptoms. Feeling tired or low energy or low mood. Or appetite or digestion. Then you've got chronic fatigue or feeling run down. All right, moving on to the next one, which is zinc. So zinc seems to be one of the key ones that are around at the moment, so take lots of zinc, but again, see the doctor, or get a blood test, they tell you exactly what you're lacking in. But zinc, some of the benefits of that is actually helping with muscle growth and repair. It's also good for skin and heart health. Also helps with nutrient absorption and digestion. It also relieves chronic fatigue. notice if you're lacking zinc. So if you're craving salty or sugary foods, you might be suffering from chronic fatigue and poor concentration. On to the next one, which is magnesium. So, magnesium, what are the benefits? So, the first benefit is increase energy levels.
improve sleep. Helps with physical performance. And lastly, it also helps with heart health. Now moving on to if you're lacking in it, you might suffer from some of these. Right, firstly we've got lacking energy, and secondly, trouble sleeping. And the last two things you might notice, muscle weakness and cramps, and then lacking in physical performance. Now you've covered all these micronutrients, what you're really looking to get is these from a natural source, not supplements. Best thing to get them, eat loads of vegetables. You still might be lacking in these four, but still try and get loads of vegetables on your plate. Ideally, more vegetables and fruit, just because fruit contains natural sugar, which is more high in calories, versus vegetables. Now we're going to look at one of my favourite sections, questions and answers. So, questions and answers, or Q&A? So these are the top 10 questions I get asked on a regular basis around quality of food and micronutrients. So start with number one, what about water? So with water, I always recommend about one and a half to two liters a day. It is some fantastic stuff. Helps to relieve fatigue, improve mood, great for the skin. It also helps to relieve any headaches you might have or migraines. But how do I drink as much as one and a half to two liters? I recommend buying yourself a bottle, about 500 milliliters, or you can get one of these, which is 2.2 liters. You can get them on Amazon quite easily. But try and break it up throughout the day. So if you get to like midday and you realize you haven't had 500 milliliters, Try and aim for that, so about 500 milliliters by midday, between midday to three, go for another 500, and then into three and six, another 500, to try and break it up into chunks. Number two, how quickly will I see improvements in my health if I eat vegetables? Well, in terms of mood, sleeping better, feeling more energy, almost instantaneously. Give it a couple of days, once you start eating those vegetables, and we'll get into more detail of that in week three, when you cover poor size and balance, but you should see improvements. And number three, how much protein should I eat in a day? Well, let's wait for the week three, and I'll tell you all about it. And you got number four. In my local supermarket, I've seen different percentages of beef and turkey. Well, in terms of percentages, you're looking for leanness. So you might have beef, which is about 15%. Then you might have lean beef, which is about 10%. Then you might have extra lean beef, which is 5%. Try and go for the leanest beef you can. That'll help up with the quality of the product, the quality of the source of protein. Five is nut butter, so cashew butter. The same as just having cashews. Yes. Exactly the same. Number six, I did mention earlier on about Greek yogurt. So in terms of Greek yogurt, try and go for the total 0% Greek yogurt, which will chuck out a higher percentage of protein than most yogurts. And it's great for breakfast if you put a little bit of fruit in there and a little bit of nuts. But again, we'll cover that more push size and balance in next week's video. And number seven, you mentioned calories, but how many does it eat in a day? Again, week three, we'll cover all that in push size and balance. And you get number eight, what happens if I'm vegan or vegetarian? How do I eat protein? Well, we looked at good, better, and best of proteins. So you're best to go with the good category, which covers beans and also peas. But again, we'll talk about the balance of portion size next week because I have a special plate of vegans and vegetarians that are separate from people who eat meat. And number nine, omega-3s versus omega-6. I've heard about them, but I don't quite get it. So basically, omega-3s are anti-inflammatory, where omega-6s are inflammatory. You want to try and find that right balance. And in the Western world, we tend to have more omega-6s than omega-3s. You're trying to get that balance more one-to-one -one or two-to-one in favour of omega-3s. Then you've got number 10, 
I've seen all these products with protein in it. So you might have seen protein Mars bars, protein cereals, protein porridges. Are there any good? I'd probably say stay away from them if you can because added with that protein is giving more and more ingredients. And generally speaking, if you look at a protein Weetabix versus regular Weetabix, there's not much difference actually in protein content and it's quite low. Just want to say a big cheers for watching this video series and really excited to share the next week's video series with you. We'll talk about portion size and balance. I've discussed it many a times, really excited to get into that detail. And what you'll need for next week is a paper plate or a piece of paper and also some stickers. If you ain't got any stickers, just grab four different colored pens. All will be explained next week in the next video. Look forward to seeing you there.